isang tula ni Rabindranath Tagore na nilapatan ng musika at inareglo ng yumaong pambansang alagad ng sining para sa musika Francisco F. Feliciano. Aawin din ng Philippine Madrigal Singers at ng AILM Choral sa pagkumpas ni Naomi Paz Season.
Pambungad na Pananalita ng Pangulo ng Sentrong Pangkultura ng Pilipinas, Dr. Raul M. Sunico. To the bereaved family of national artist, Dr. Francisco Feliciano, our national artists in attendance, Dr. Ben Lumbera, Mr. Ben Camprera, and Mr. Abdul Marie Imao. Fellow artists, friends, ladies, and gentlemen. On behalf of the Cultural Center of the Philippines, I would like to express our deepest sympathy to the brief family of Dr. Francisco Feliciano and to pay tribute to this consummate artist, conductor, composer, and educator. Perhaps largely unheralded where his name may not ring a bell to most of us. Dr. Feliciano was a silent worker. He preferred to stay with his students at the AILM, working with them, trying to mold them into what, have they, what they have become, both in the national and international stage. He was a cerebral composer, whose works appeal more to the intellect than the emotion. They were really away from the raw ethnicity ethnicities, or the overly sentimental characteristic that pervades some of our own music, nor the flamboyance of many compositions that elicit a lot of applause. Dr. Feliciano's style veered towards the modal scale, whose characteristic is rather oblique to the pointed resolution of Western tonality, which accounts for its mystical character, its mysteriousness, perhaps its ambiguity, and maybe quite also a reflection of what I know of his personality. And yet, the sense of nationalism was always evident in Dr. Feliciano's output. His so-called Asianness that, that he has been known for was always evident, meaning to say that although he was trained in the Western way mostly, he still had that sense of nationalism where his creative subtlety worked its way towards an output that we can probably call Filipino, Asian, and universal at the same time. My first meeting with Dr. Feliciano, or Kiko, as he is fondly remembered, although I must admit I never dared call him that out of respect, was when I was a student at the UP College of Music. I was a student of his composition class. I was not a composition major, although composition was one of the subjects in our curriculum. It was my first experience in 20th century writing, and I must admit, I must confess, that I could not appreciate at the time or comprehend that with my tonal and melodic background of Chopin, Beethoven, and Franz Liszt, that I would be imposed upon to compose music that relied more on quartal, quintal harmonies, and all those dissonances that's present in contemporary music. Little did I realize the depth of his creative genius, which he would further be empowered when he went to the Yale University, where he was under the tutelage of celebrated 20th century composer, Polish Krzysztof Penderecki who is one of the major pillars of contemporary music. Dr. Feliciano was a humble and patient man, as I know him. 
Perhaps others may perceive him differently, but I saw him as a man who was rather quiet, somebody who would rather be in his own world, and yet he was confident of what he wanted to do, not only in his output, but also in how he molded his students, how he conducted his choirs, how he conducted his orchestras. Although he was a silent worker, his achievements are not less significant. He was at one time a conductor of our own Philippine Philharmonic Orchestra that's present this morning. He was the founder about 23 years ago of the Asian Institute for Music and Liturgy. And he was always an educator for many students, both of composition and conducting, many of whom have also been on the international and national stages. Today, together with the National Commission for Culture and the Arts, the Cultural Center of the Philippines is proud and honored to offer this tribute to this genius of a man whose output and legacy will far outlive him. And I'm sure his compositions that will be manifested in the different choirs, the different performers, the different orchestras that will be performing his works later will really verify and validate that Dr. Feliciano indeed is a national artist. It is lamentable, of course, that the conferment of Dr. Feliciano as a national artist has not yet been completed. Nonetheless, the recognition that we offer him today is nonetheless diminished, no less diminished. I will end my short remarks quoting the lyrics of a song that I heard last night when I attended the Mass at his wake, sung very eloquently by the Novo Concertante Choir and the AILM Choir. And it says something like this. Until we meet again, may the Lord hold you in the palm of his hand. Thank you very much, National Artist, Dr. Francisco Feliciano. He was my idol the whole time. Well, yes, he was strict um, in teaching music, but as a father, he, he did everything for me. I didn't, there was nothing he didn't do. I can't think of anything that he didn't do for me. Mahusay siyang family man, actually. Yung mga needs ng mga anak niya talagang inaasikasyo niya. Well, he's always very encouraging whatever your endeavors. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it's small or big. Francisco Feliciano's lifetime corpus of musical compositions celebrates the image of the modern Filipino, highlighting the harmonious union of Filipino culture and the appropriated Western musical idiom. His conscientiousness in bringing out the Asian spirit in his music has contributed to bringing to the awareness of people all over the world Asian culture as a rich source of inspiration. He has brought out the unique sounds of Philippine indigenous music in compositions requiring high technical demands equal to the compositions of masters in the West. Many of his choral compositions have been performed by the best choirs in the country, including the Philippine Madrigal Singers, the UP Singing Ambassadors, the Novo Concertante Manila, and have won for them high critical acclaim and numerous awards in the most prestigious international choral competitions. Audiences all over the world have been awed by his compositions. From the mystical atmosphere of his musical settings, of the meditative Tagore poems, to the mesmerizing charm and astonishing demands of works 
He incorporates the subtleties of the indigenous cultures, rhythmic vitality while intricately interweaving melodic lines that possess an Asian character. His operas, ballets, and orchestral works showcase the masterful treatment of a musical language that is unique and carries with it a contemporary style that allows for the use of modal scales, Filishano's preferred tonality. The intention of bringing out the indigenous culture, particularly in sound, is strongly evident in La Loba Negra, Ashen Wings, and Yerma. As a performer, Filishano has brought the Filipino musician at par with the rest of the world. His having been invited to conduct the major orchestras of Europe, America, and Asia attests to the high regard afforded to him by his colleagues and musical institutions around the world. His nationalism is highly evident in all of these endeavors, through his insistence to always include at least one Filipino composition in his programming. Filishano is convinced that when Filipino compositions are done well, they can stand at par with their Western counterparts. Filishano's philosophy in music is evident through his lifelong mission of propagating a new language for religious music, spread all over Asia by his numerous students at the Asian Institute for Liturgy and Music, which he founded in 1980. Many of the churches in the neighboring Asian countries have seen a renewed worship repertoire because of his strong influence among those who have come to the Institute to study. Because of his tireless dedication to educating many Filipinos and other Asian students to embrace their indigenous cultures, Filishano has earned the respect of many esteemed musicians and church leaders around the world. Filishano, whose influence is considered as one of Asia's most prominent through inspiring countless young Filipino and Asian musicians, is a testament to the ideals of the genuine Filipino musician. He has preserved the rich musical heritage of the country through his lifetime creative works that reflect artistic refinement of international caliber while emphasizing the brilliance of the Filipino spirit. In recognition of excellence in the arts and significant contribution to Filipino music. Francisco Feliciano has been proclaimed national artist. Filipino. Pag-aalay ng bulaklak ng mga pampansang alagad ng sining sa saliw ng intermezzo mula sa Cavaleria Rusticana. Tutugtugin ng Philippine Philharmonic Orchestra sa pagkumpas ni Maestro Olivier Ocenino. Benedicto Cabrera, pamansang alagad ng sining 
para sa sining visual. Abdul Mari Asia Imao, pembansang alagad ng sining para sa sining bisual. Bienvenido Lumbera, pambansang alagad ng sinin para sa panitikan. Ramon Santos, pambansang alagad ng sining para sa musika. Nagdadalamhati ang buong bayan dahil sa pagpanaw ng isang pambansang alagad ng sining. Isang alagad ng sining na nagbuhos ng kanyang karunungan, talento at galing sa kapakanan ng isang bayang masining at puspos ng maramdaming pagkatao. Nakilala ko si Paring Kiko sa Konservatoryo ng Musika sa Universidad ng Pilipinas bilang isang klarinetista, habang ako naman ay tumutugtog ng French horn sa UP Symphony Orchestra. Hindi ko siya iniintindi noon sapagat siya ay isang laking banda. Iba ang aking pinagmulan Kumbaga, ang aking mga inaawit sa araw-araw ay pawang mga Gregorian chant. Lumaki ako sa isang seminaryo. Ngunit nang lumaon, ay lalo na kaming nagkakilala nung mga taong magtatapos na kami sa aming pag-aaral. Siya ay nag-aral ng komposisyon kay Eliseo Paaro at ako naman ay kay Hilarion Rubio. Sa aking mga pangunang gunita, ang kanyang mga unang likha ay mapusok at punong-puno ng sigla tulad ng Thomas Claudio Overture at Youth Symphony. Ngunit matapos siyang makapag-aral sa ibang bansa, ang kanyang mga obra ay nagkaroon ng katangi-tanging tunog, malawak na kamalayan, marubdob na nilalaman at matingkad at malalim na katauhan. Nag-ibayo ang malalakas na palatunugan 
sa kabila ng mga espiritual na nilalaman ng mga ito, tulad ng Verklerong Christi para sa malaking orkestra at Transfiguration para sa orkestra, koro at tagapagsalita. Sa kanyang pagtulay sa katutubong musika, kinatahan niya ang sikhay sa kabila ng paalam, ulog at ading. Ang kanyang obra maestra ay ang yerma para sa sayaw at ang dramatikong opera na La Loba Negra na isang tunay na operang Pilipino kung saan ang istorya at kasaysayan ay hango sa revolusyon ng mga Pilipino laban sa dayuhang mananakop at pati na ang nilalamang musika ay taglay ang mga katutubong himig ng pasyon. Totoong lubos ng husay at sensitibo ang pagkatao ni kumparing Kiko. Sa kanyang mga likha na sumasalamin sa kontemporaryong idioma sa musika na kinalulugdan at kinikilala ng mga alagad ng sining sa ibang bansa. Ngunit ang isang mahalagang ambag na kanyang nagawa ay ang magtuklas ng mga musikang pangrelihiyon batay sa mga katutubong musika sa Asia. Ito ang kauna-unahang pagkakataon na lumikha ng mga awiting batay sa kultura at kaisipan ng mga Asyatiko upang lalong maging akma sa pandama at pananampalataya ng mga tao sa kanilang sariling wikang pangmusika. At matagumpay itong nagampanan ng paaralang kanyang itinatag at inaruga. Ang Asian Institute for Liturgy and Music na hanggang ngayon ay patuloy na tumutuklas at lumilikha ng kakaibang paglalahad damdamin sa ngala ng relihiyon at pananampalataya. Bilang isang kinikilalang konduktor, nakumpasan niya ng buong husay ang iba't ibang ang pangkata ng orkestra sa buong mundo, tulad ng Moscow Symphony Orchestra at Chicago Symphony Orchestra, gayon na rin ng ating Philippine Philharmonic Orchestra. Sa kabila ng mga nagawa at nilikha niya sa mga hindi ordinaryong pamamaraan, si kumparing Kiko ay isang simpleng tao sa aking pagkakakilala sa kanya. Tuo, totoong nagtagpo ang aming dalawang landas. Unang-una, limang araw lamang ang tanda niya sa akin sapagkat pareho kaming pinanganak noong Pebrero 1941. Siya sa Morong at ako naman ay sa Pasig. Halos nagkasabay kami pumasok sa konserbatoryo ng musika. Nauna akong nang, nangibambayan, ngunit ang mga pinadadala kong mga obra dito sa Pilipinas ay siya ang gumaganap at kumukumpas. Isa na rito ang aking kinatang Dingdinga Diyawa na unang kinanta ng UP Madrigal Singers sa kanyang pagkumpas. Nang siya naman ay pumalaot, Pinagkatiwala niya sa akin ang pagkumpas sa St. Andrew's Choir na siyang pinanggalingan ng Asian Institute for Liturgy at Music. At ako ang hinirang niyang maging ninong sa binyag ng kanyang anak na si JJ. Nagkita kami sa Darmstadt, Alemania at ako ay tumira sa kanilang bahay sa Berlin. Nagkita muli kami sa New York noong siya ay nag-aaral na sa Estados Unidos. Pare, sana'y nasisihang ka na ngayon at wala na ang iyong karamdaman. Ipagpaumanhin mo na wala ako sa pagkakataong ito. Ngunit, alam kong maligaya ka na sa piling ng may kapal na iyong pinagsilbihan ng buong husay at ng buong tapat. Paalam at sa muli nating pagkikita.
napakahaba na ng gabi mula sa La Loba Negra, libreto ni Fides Cuyugan Asensio at musika ni Francisco F. Feliciano. Aawitin ni J. Rubis Ricio, soprano, kasama ng Philippine Madrigal Singers, AILM Choral at Philippine Philharmonic Orchestra sa ilalim ng pagkumpas ni Maestro Olivier Oceanin.
Arwin Q. Tan, kaibigan. Dr. Feliciano once said, I would like my music to be sung by the people of the mountains, of the seas, and of the people in the streets. His vision of propagating the art of composition within the context of Asian culture has been his lifelong vocation. The establishment of the Asian Institute for Liturgy and Music in 1980 prepared for the foundation of spreading this artistic canon. In its 34 years, the Institute has graduated a few hundred alumni serving as church musicians all over Asia. He believed that in establishing AILM, he came closer to his advocacy to discover and develop an aesthetic that is connected to the Filipino's character, sentiments, and way of life. <clears throat> the academic atmosphere at Elam provided a conducive venue for studying, preserving and propagating the ancient poems, music, and other writings of the Filipinos of olden times. What distinguishes Elam from other music institutions is its being rooted in training musicians in the context of religion and culture. The Institute came about as a result of his predicament on the usage of alien cultural symbols in Asian Christian churches, which includes visual and material representations and music. According to Dr. Feliciano, Elam is a challenge not only to the Filipino churches, but also to the churches all over Asia to look inward to rediscover the Asian spirit and worship our God in ways that are Asian. At the Institute, he advocated an educational philosophy that gave emphasis on the use of native cultures of students who came from the many countries of Asia. Students conceptualize musical compositions in a new manner where they learn to appropriate Western compositional techniques into their authentic indigenous musical practices, resulting to works that showcase the culture of ethnic minorities written in an international level. Many of Sir's compositional philosophies are revealed by one of his former students, Daud Kusasi, who is now one of Sumatra's active music educators. Kusasi shared how Feliciano regarded as problematic the inclusion of Asian instruments in works without understanding their true nature and the spirit behind them. One must study the proper usage of these cultural materials before they can be utilized in a musical composition and become a true representation of the said culture. For sir, there is no limiting predicament when one is given the challenge to compose a melody with only three, four, or five notes as evidenced by his award-winning choral composition, Pok Pok Alipako, in which the thematic material revolves around only three notes. Another one is what we have just heard in the beginning of this beautiful tribute, The Silence My Soul, where he used only six notes in the entire composition. Kosasi also emphasized Dr. Felicianus' philosophy and giving importance to the discovery of an original musical voice that is not spoken by other composers in order that one can develop his or her own musical language. Perhaps the most significant lesson a teacher can impart to his students is to always maintain humility. <coughs> humility, despite the ample knowledge, <coughs> talent, and skills they have acquired. The many years of actively propagating musical compositions created within an Asian context through his many roles as conductor, composer, and music educator has earned for Francisco F. Feliciano a praiseworthy position in the cultural history of our nation. His compositions reflect an inherent passion for uplifting and progressively enhancing the awareness of people around the world for indigenous Asian cultures, emphasizing the communal way of life and rituals that exhibit the innate spirituality of the many peoples of Asia. 
His works possess the imaginative characteristics of blending divergent elements of Asian and Western music, resulting to compositions that are original, contributing to the Philippine nation's impressive roster of new cultural treasures. National artist for literature, Nick Joaquin, said before that, I quote, challenges when met with superior response advance and enlarge a people so that what may have been a handicap or a doom becomes a heroic step forward. He further stated that historically, the Filipino as a people has been inclined to work best on a small scale, choosing materials that are easy to handle and manipulate and once have, and I quote again, mastered a material style, craft, or product tend to run in it and don't move on to a next phase, to a larger development based on what has been learned." End of quote. Once in a while, however, an exceptional Filipino appears and faces up to the great difficult challenges and aids in advancing the nation forward. In music, Francisco Feliciano has confronted the enormous challenge to represent the essence of Filipinoness in an art form that is shaped and dominated primarily by the West. Aside from the many simple liturgical hymns, short pieces for voice and small ensemble, Feliciano faced the challenge to compose for large-scale genres like opera, ballet, mass, song cycles, and symphonic poem. His compositions reflect the triumph of imagination, nerve and craftsmanship that elevate Philippine music into a higher class admired by peoples of the world. Certainly, his superior response to the gargantuan challenge in bringing out the Filipino spirit in his music has enhanced Philippine culture and improved the status and identity of the Filipino people. His enormous contribution to Philippine music and theater is remarkably inspiring and a valuable source of national pride, for he symbolizes the excellence in Filipino artistry. His lifetime corpus of works can best be described by what the New York critic Richard Hyman once wrote. His music is international in style with a refined and lively Philippine spirit. It is this very spirit, captured and represented by Feliciano's innovative music, that is hoped to linger for a long time among the commonest of all Filipinos, the peoples of the mountains, of the seas, and of the streets. Thank you very much. Ang OIC Director Tagapagpaganap ng Pambansang Komisyon para sa Kultura at Mga Sining, Adelina M. Suemit. Distinguished National Artists, Honored Guests, Family and Friends of the late National Artist Francisco M. Feliciano, Fellow Government Servants, Ladies and Gentlemen, it is my distinct honor to represent the Honorable Chairman of the National Commission for Culture and the Arts, Professor Felipe de Leon, Jr., who is currently abroad. As we all pay tribute to a remarkable Filipino and a distinguished musician, educator, and creative artist, let me read his message. It is very unfortunate that we will all gather here today at the Cultural Center of the Philippines, not to bestow upon him officially his most deserved award as National Artist of the Philippines, but to honor him as he lay in rest through these rites. The conferment and awarding ceremony are all but ceremonial. 
The essence is the recognition given him by the state, his peers, and by the whole nation to whom he offered his life work that embodied his passion for music creation and his exceptional talent as an artist and a Filipino. Francisco Feliciano will be best remembered for his distinctive musical style that fuses indigenous spirituality with contemporary techniques and for which he earned the respect of many esteemed musicians and church leaders around the world. He was not only a teacher, he was a mentor. Above all, his pride in his nation was very evident in his conviction that the Filipinos are at par with the world's best. While today's tribute here at the CCP is graced with resounding musical performances to honor him and pay our last respects, the angels in heaven must be singing louder, more joyfully, to welcome the music master that is Francisco Feliciano. On behalf of the National Commission for Culture and the Arts and the whole nation, we salute you. We thank you, National Artist Francisco Feliciano. Maraming salamat po sa inyo at sa inyong musika at henyo. Jeanette Marie Feliciano Batara, anak. Good morning to everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the CCP and the NCCA for recognizing my father as a national artist. And second, today, I would like to say thank you for all the beautiful days of his week. The past few days um, have been filled with music by various people, uh, uh, orchestra members and choirs alike. And I would like to thank the CCP and the NCCA also for honoring him with this tribute in the CCP where he spent a decade making beautiful music. Um, we were often asked as now and even as children if our father wanted us to go into music. In fact, it was just the opposite. He never wanted us to go into music. He said it is difficult. It is a difficult path. Um, and he said, and not all of us can be crazy. Some of us, some of us have to be sane. So crazy meaning, for him, crazy means uh, thinking out of the box. Uh, and he always said that there have to be crazy people in this world for us to move forward. If no one is, no one thinks out of the box, we will not get anywhere. And I think that speaks for his life. He was always a visionary, willing to go where no one else was going. And so he was often misunderstood because he was way ahead of his time. Um, he worked, he was a workaholic, he continuously worked. We were also asked, how does he compose? Does he sit down uh, somewhere uh, and lock the door? And we said, no, he composes every minute of his life, wherever he is. He doesn't sit down to write on paper. We will just see him writing it down when the composition is already finished, or a large part of it was finished. So he was not, he was always with us also, and they also uh, people also asked, is he strict? And as my brother said, no, he was never strict. So I'm very surprised when I hear from people that uh, you know he's very strict and he's you know he demands a lot. But for us, he lived more by example meaning his work ethic, uh, his strive to do his best in anything that he did. Uh, and that is something that we carry and we hope to emulate through our life. 
So uh, two years ago, he was almost two years ago, he was diagnosed with colonic CA. And during that time, I would find myself looking at obituaries and seeing, oh, this person lived for more than 80 years, 86, 87, or 95. And I would actually say, nakakaingit naman, but yung tatay ko kinukuha na. Okay. But through the journey in the past two years, I've come to realize that he has lived a full life and that quality is better than quantity. So now I have realized that hindi na ako naiingit. Okay, so I have reflected on his life and I have seen that he, had, he has reached what he wanted to reach. He has achieved what he wanted to achieve. Although he still had a lot of plans, uh, I would like to share uh, his two major visions. One, he has pretty much realized already that of worshiping God to, the best po to our best possible ability. For him, you cannot create a mass without doing really, really good music. Uh, he said that it's not enough for God if you, don't, uh, if you don't do the music well or you don't do the worship well. And so he created the Asian Institute for Liturgy and Music, which you have now been uh, hearing about this morning. In the last two or three years, he has slowly uh, veered away a little from the liturgy and has gone more into the music. And his other vision is uh, education, music education. He believed that for us to go on as a nation and to build, to, for us to build a better nation, we need to educate the young in music and the arts starting from the very, very young. So now, he said, we cannot build a nation without a soul, and so that we cannot go anywhere if we don't educate the young. So, Dad, I think uh, we are happy that you have lived a full life. You have, uh, we will miss you but we promise to carry on this last vision of yours. We will work on it together. Thank you. Family Nawen, Arreglo ni Francisco F. Felician, Aawitin ng Philippine Madrigal Singers at Elem Coral sa ilalim ng pagkumpas ni Naomi Paz Season.
ating bigyan ng masigapong palakpakan ang ating mahal na pambansang alagad ng sinis.